Today we're going step by step on all the things you should do and things you should know in order to prep a cinema camera package as an assistant camera. The first thing you get when you come to a rental house is a slip. It's a whole list that's the whole package of things that you're renting out. So the first thing you do is you go over all through the list and make sure that everything that you rented out here is out here. And if there's something that's not here that you should have here, then you talk to the rental people to have them there for you. This is not where you go specifically into every item that comes later down the line, but you first go through the whole package and make sure, okay, cameras here, lenses are here, mad box is here. Everything that you rented out should be here. Next thing you do is just set up a tripod. So then you can build a camera on top here and point it towards your focusing chart at the end here. Here is the camera. Today we're using a Sony Venice that we're gonna build. You make sure to slide the camera and it's safely on the tripod. Grab the batteries and make sure they all have a charge or they can hold a charge. Yep. And the charger that comes with it. Make sure the mount is the correct one. We put the widest lens that we have in the kit. In this case, we are with some Super Baltars today, rehoused, and we're using 35 as our first lens. You start building out the whole camera and try to get it as close as possible as you're gonna have it on set. We're gonna put the lens, the matte box, we're gonna put wireless video, rods, transmitter, everything as if we would have it on set to make sure, number one, that everything works, and number two, that the package is compatible with everything with each other. find a good spot here on the side for the Teradex. Teradex have to be pointing upwards so the antennas work everywhere they are. We're just putting all the cables and then at the end we plug them into the camera. In the case of wireless focus, since I am working mostly as a first assistant camera, I would provide my own wireless focus. Some rental houses and some productions will rent one for you. This is a very basic Tilta nucleus, control unit and motor. I like to put this on the right side of the camera because it's just easier for me to see the screen. So you put it wherever is most comfortable and very, very tight. This thing cannot move at all. Only the little wheel should be able to move. Since these are all the accessories that I'm gonna have plugged into this simple camera package, the one thing I forgot to include while shooting this video was that you need to attach a monitor or a viewfinder to the camera. Usually, if the monitor provided by the rental house is working, the monitor on board should work, but don't forget this important step, like myself. We get this, that's a D-tap splitter. We put it up here where there's some Velcro. Velcro is super, super, super useful. You should have lots and lots of it. Plug it to the camera, to the battery. See the green light, that means we have power. And then we start plugging all of our accessories into our splitter to give them power. Then you power on. Make sure everything works. So the camera when you turn it on is gonna have the same settings as the last production that rented it out. These are probably not the same settings that you wanna use. So you wanna either factory reset the camera or you wanna set up the settings that your DP was to use for their production into the camera at this point. So now we set it up to 24 frames per second, 500 ISO, which is the base ISO, one of the two bases ISO of this camera, 180 shutter, no ND, the look on these two SDIs, and 5500 white balance. We plug in the Teradek or the wireless video to SDI 3 or 4, because that gives us a look, a look out, which is a mod to our monitor, which we're gonna set up now. Everything is ready and set up in the camera to be tested. Now we gotta set up the monitor that they're providing here to see our image. So we're gonna set it up with another wireless video to make sure everything works properly and we'll be able to see the picture here in a second. Now we have picture on this monitor. As you can see, we can see all of the menu settings on the camera around it. This is personal preference. I like to see so I can be able to tell everything at a glance. Some directors like to see it and some DPs definitely like to see what settings you're on, but you can change the settings whether you only wanna see this or the whole thing in the camera itself. So now that the camera is all set up and we're ready to start shooting and testing all the lenses and media, we wanna check the lenses and media. So a quick check is that you open up both caps and look at the light, you look through the lens, you make sure the whole aperture closes and opens without a problem. And same with the front element, you look at it and you're looking for any scratches, any haze, any type of dirtiness that you can clean or that is scratched in the lens itself. If it's scratching the lens itself that you want to put it to get it replaced, but if it's something you can clean, 
definitely if you see some dust just blow air, some air through it and you see a little bit of scratch just clean it as you would clean the camera lens so next step is we check the media here we got two cards you look at it and there's gonna be this is a and there's a serial number back here and we'll write it on our camera report that the one terabyte card is this serial number and you grab the other card and you write down the serial number as well so you know which card is which. The reason why we do this is because if a card fails, we want to be able to point out exactly which of both or the many cards that we have is failing so we send it either to repair or get it replaced. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a read-write test. We're going to grab both of them, we're going to put them on the camera, shoot a few seconds and play it back. If it all works, then the camera passed the test. Grab the first card and we put it on camera. At this point, you format the card. I press both these buttons to format it. Press record. We have some movement in the frame, and then we cut. Something very short, very simple. With our reference monitor, we play back the clip, see if it all plays correctly. Now I should be playing back. Everything looks fine to me. So this card passed the read and write test. You do this with every card. Make sure that all the cards and serial numbers match, everything is good, and you're good to put those cards away. At this point, we're going to check the focus of every lens that we have in our kit. We grab this chart, this focus chart that we have at the end, and we put it at the marked distance from the lens from the camera sensor. Every digital camera has a little mark on the side called the sensor plane, and it's marked by this little circle with a dash going through it. You measure from here to that focus chart over there, and you set your lens to that distance, and if it's in focus, lens is good. You gotta do that with every single lens. I can't understate that. Lenses sometimes behave weirdly. Sometimes they don't focus right. You gotta make sure the marks on the right are accurate. Usually the most important ones are the marks towards the closer side of the lens, so we're gonna begin with those. As you can see, the lens has marks on the side indicating 10, 8, 7, 6, 5 feet away from here to our focus chart. So we're gonna set it up two, four feet. You see a good quality tape measure? There's a little nub here that marks exactly, and it's made to put your tape measure on it, and it marks exactly where the focal plane begins. So put it up there. So now this is four feet away, and the image is in focus at four feet. Now we're gonna do this with every single distance and every single lens. If anything is wrong, let the rental house know so you get that lens replaced. One final check with every lens is you want to mount every single lens as you're checking for the accurate focus to make sure they all mount properly and that nothing is loose. You want to make sure every time that the lens gears from your wireless focus always lands in the same spot from the gears in every lens. Some older lenses, the gears are either they move either this way or this way. In newer lenses, they're all exactly in the same spot. Since these are rehoused and they're very old lenses, you want to double check that the nucleus either stays in the same spot or be aware that you might have to move it for some other lenses. Then you make sure that it's not slipping. In this case, it's not slipping, so that means this is tightly secured, which means you're good to go. After you went through everything, you make sure the lenses are mounting, the accessories are mounting, everything kind of looks how it's going to look on set. You're ready to start packing things up and double checking your list that everything in every case is where it's supposed to be. Now you go through the list item by item. I cannot state this enough. Item by item to make sure that every single cable, every single thing, every single plate, all the things that you're renting out are there. And if they're not, let your rental house know so either get it for you or take it off your slip. And finally, once you make sure everything in your slip is accounted for, it is time to either break down the camera or put it in a coffin. A coffin is like a plastic box full of foam or like frenny pads where you can put the camera safely and it wouldn't hurt itself on transport. You can leave it built and just put it in a coffin, close it, it's all full of foam and everything, like a little case, let's say, but to leave the camera built. It serves for many different types of cameras. It's usually an improvised thing that you have in the camera department. If somebody else is gonna pick it up and it's not you responsible for that, then you must break everything down, put it back exactly where it was, label everything so you know where it goes, and you're ready to go to shoot. I wanna personally thank DFI Rentals for letting us shoot in their spot and sponsoring this video. They are a rental house here in downtown Los Angeles. 
and they let me use these rehoused Super Baltars. These lenses were used to shoot the Godfather series. They shot the Lighthouse and the Witch on this. So if you want to get that beautiful look from those classic movies, then DFI Rentals has the lenses for you. They have six focal lengths, all the way from 20 millimeters ranging to 100 millimeters. So come to DFI Rentals and get those Super Baltars out and get to shooting. So this was a camera prep for assistant cameras mostly where you see the whole breakdown of gear, how to build it, check that everything is working. The prep that camera operators do is a little different. If you want to learn about that, leave it in the comments down below and we'll get a camera operator to show you how to do that. And this was today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Stay tuned for more content and thank you for watching.